And so, for the benefit of young and old alike, and for the first time anywhere, let's take a look at what could be, and should be, the future. This is the new system. Splendid, isn't it? Seconds now come in blocks of 100, as do minutes, which will of course make hours longer. Great for lunch hours. But days become significantly shorter. How do you fancy a two-hour working day? And although these days are shorter, which would undoubtedly scupper the whole sunrise-sunset process, the weeks are longer. So arguably, so can the weekends be. Months enjoy a less radical shift, going from around about four-ish weeks a month to precisely five. No confusion, no arguments. The dozen or so months a year that we're used to would also be pared down to a lovely decimal ten, which admittedly does create a small problem. Somehow, we would need to lose two months. According to the new system, the end of the year would fall around about 10.40am on October the 16th, as we know it now. So, yes, that drops New Year's Eve squarely into our laps a full fortnight before Halloween. And logically speaking, it would make sense to simply abandon November and December and deny they ever existed. However, if you were to reference the history books, you would discover that in the days immediately before Roman times, there were only 10 months. July and August were wedged in the middle as a tribute to Julius Caesar and Caesar Augustus. So maybe it would be less traumatic to ditch the two summer months and thusly save the festive season as we know it. Granted, we would all lose out on that wonderful feeling of going on holiday in the United Kingdom and sitting on the beach, in the rain, simply because it's August and that means it's summer. Plus, the supermarkets would have to start their back-to-school sales in March. However, by way of compensation and to cushion the blow, it could be proposed that the recently deceased August bank holiday be replaced by a bank holiday every single month. It seems to work okay in Scotland. In fact, under the new system, there would be a number of quite important things to deal with quite urgently. The police would have to organise a national timepiece amnesty, where members of the public would be required, by law, to surrender all watches, clocks, radio alarm clocks and sundials, much in the same way as has been done in the past with firearms and Rick Astley records. We would also have to find names for three new weekdays, the time on the tradition in this kind of situation is to throw it open to the creative genius of our children. Obviously, this would be coordinated by the appropriate government organisation, namely Blue Peter, who would undoubtedly stage a contest unlike any Name Our Tortoise or Draw the Thames Barrier effort that has gone before. Care should be taken though, as the creative genius of our children may well burden us with the likes of Beck's Day or indeed Justin Timber Day. Sadly, anyone who was unlucky enough to have been born during July and August would technically not exist, or at least suffer the indignity of all those born on the 29th of February who get to enjoy a birthday once in every blue never. At this point, there are two options. We could capitalise upon these individuals' newfound anonymity and recruit them into MI5 as secret agents. But, as summer babies account for roughly 16.5% of the UK's population, it raises the question, does Great Britain really need 990,000 new spies? The answer? Probably not. Alternatively, it may be more sensible to arrange a mass reshuffle of everyone's birthdays. Quite simply, if you were born between the 1st of July and the 31st of August, you would be given carte blanche to choose any other day of the reformatted year to be your birthday. On this basis, the possibilities would be endless. If the even distribution of prezies is important to you, then select somewhere around the new May 21st, which places your birthday and Christmas at exactly half-year intervals. Or, if you prefer one big annual blowout, then opt for the end of the new cycle, formerly known as October, and merge your birthday with the newly founded holiday of Halloistmas. Oh yes, an exciting new festival that would not only preserve Halloween and Christmas, but would give Santa the chance for a bit of a restyle, 
ditching his traditional red and white suit in favour of an orange and black one, and maybe some green highlights in the beard. The secondary benefit of re-registering as a human being is that at some point you would need to be issued with a new birth certificate. Not enormously exciting in itself, but it represents a world of opportunity, because at some point you would be asked to submit your personal details, and thereby lies the loophole. As you have officially ceased to exist, you can submit whatever you like. Call yourself Antonio P. Thunderbolt if you want. It's your life. Ladies, why suffer the pain and expense of Botox and collagen to feel younger? Just knock 15 years off your age and be younger. And if the mood takes you, why not nominate new parents? The pocket money is probably better under Mr. and Mrs. Bill Gates, or as you like to call them, Mum and Dad. It may sadly mean that Her Majesty, God bless her, has to limit herself to just one birthday a year, but she'll have other things to worry about, like recalculating all former and future jubilees. It may also become necessary to have a quiet word with nature. Experts have recommended that a task force be assembled to deal with the resulting confusion throughout the animal kingdom. The team itself should be assembled from the finest minds in the field, Mostly the keepers from London, Bristol and Edinburgh zoos, Terry Nutkins, Michaela Strachan and any direct descendants of Johnny Morris. Their mission would be simple, to reacclimatize any and all creatures who may have become disorientated when dawn and dusk start occurring at odd times through the day and night. Worst affected would be foxes, hedgehogs and the noble badger, who would need to be electronically tagged much like common criminals, in order to alert the authorities should they leave their woodland dwellings and go foraging through your bins mid-afternoon. Another core element of the assignment would be to develop a system to prevent us humans from being deafened by the incessant hooting of a thousand owls partway through countdown, maybe through the application of very tiny gags and or blindfolds. But more desperately, it's our other feathered friends who present the biggest challenge. Exhibit A, the Dawn Chorus. The principal feature of the Dawn Chorus is that it happens at dawn, which is, relatively speaking, the same time every morning. If nothing else, at least it's always in the morning. If dawn itself became a movable feast, it's feared that millions of branch-dwelling songbirds would become so confused that they would either stop singing completely or start singing constantly and thus trigger the first recorded epidemic of sparrow laryngitis. To combat this, scientists have proposed that every starling, thrush, chaffinch and skylark be fitted with a tiny microchip which, at a predetermined time each morning, delivers a tiny electric shock to signify the start of the day and kick-start the cheery chirping. Of course, extensive road tests are still required on the equipment as there is a small possibility that activating the chips in heavy rain may render the creatures unconscious and have them dropping out of the trees like conkers. Steps would also need to be taken to prevent the aforementioned birds from perching on overhead telephone cables whilst chipped, otherwise the only song they'll be singing will be the irritating <laughs> you get when you put your mobile phone too close to your car stereo. So clearly there are some trivial factors to consider such as the disruption of all natural life as we know it, but on the whole, the positives far outweigh such minor irritations. Namely, time itself will be easier to understand. Children will no longer need to attend stress management after school. Birdsong could be switched on and off like a light bulb. We'd all get new watches. Just under one million UK citizens could change their names, ages and lives in general. Major celebrations would be lumped together, thus reducing the overall annual cost of greetings cards and wrapping paper, but creating business opportunities for the writers of Halloistmas cards. Do you think it could work? If not, why not? If so, what would be the biggest advantages? How would it affect you? Discuss!